Hey, Alison, good day to you. I've been talking to the scientists behind this vaccine for uh, weeks and months, and it is fun to talk to them. You know, we spend a lot of time talking to scientists with doom and gloom right now, but these guys, they're really hopeful. They're very hopeful for their science, for their vaccine, and they're pushing it hard. And that is because they have tested this vaccine before. It's a, it's a vaccine that they have tweaked for the current coronavirus, COVID-19, uh, but they have used it in human trials. What they're doing now is expanding human trials to more than 10,000 people, children as young as five, folks over 70. It's really the, the real test now to see if this vaccine works, Alison, and also whether it's safe, because the plan is to have maybe a billion doses by the end of 2021. A billion, a billion dollars invested by the American government, a billion doses in money invested by the British government too. Uh, and of course, if you're going to have that many vaccinations, anything that could go wrong will go wrong. You really have to have tested it thoroughly. And yet at the same time, there's the, the race against time. Uh, and these scientists here at Oxford University saying that they believe that if all things go to plan in terms of the testing process, that they could have uh, these vaccines approved by uh, later this year. There are hills to climb. They have tested them in monkeys. And what they found in those tests, it was a very small group of monkeys, uh, was that the monkeys still were infected, but the infection didn't get into their lungs. One of the interesting aspects of all of this, Alison, which I think is fascinating and helps to understand why it's good that there are lots of vaccines being worked on around the world, is that there isn't just one kind of vac vaccine or one kind of vaccine efficacy. Uh, in fact, you can have stronger, more effective vaccines and weaker vaccines that maybe hinder a virus but don't, don't stop it completely. And in particular, uh, vaccines can work very well in younger people, but it's more challenging with older folks. So clearly what we need to hope for is not just a vaccine that works, but a vaccine that works really well. And that's what these tests are all about uh, showing. Alison? The U.S. has invested more than a billion dollars in AstraZeneca's coronavirus vaccine. Researchers hoping to run clinical trials in the U.S. in the coming weeks. NBC News medical correspondent Dr. John Torres joining me now. And Dr. John, how promising is this vaccine study so far? What would you say about it? Yeah, you know, Allison, what I would say is it's promising at this stage, but with that big caveat at this stage, because okay. these vaccine trials, there's a few of them out there that look like they're doing very well, but they're also in very early phases or they've been studied in monkeys. Now, what we do know is in the past, the history is replenished with with a lot of companies that have done something similar and haven't got, quite gotten through that phase three because it just didn't work for some reason. And what uh, Gears was saying exactly is true is the safety of it is paramount, especially when you start expanding to those other groups and talk about giving it to a billion people. And so even though these are promising signs, we still have to hold our breath for a little bit here because they still have a couple more phases to go through. And each phase, different problems can pop up. They need to be very sure because they're not gonna have the usual, you know, 10 to 12 years they have on vaccine research to find out what might go wrong. They're really fast tracking this. And so we're not going to know all the long term issues, but we're going to know the short term safety issues. And it's important to get that vaccine, of course, mm -hmm. because of the pandemic that's going on now. But again, it's good news, but good news with a few caveats, Allison. All right, Dr. John, I I'm so predictable at this point. You know what I'm going to ask you now, right? <laughs> if all goes well, when could we see a vaccine? I thought it was going to be about vaping, Allison. The uh, if all goes well, I think we're talking still <laughs> it's twelve been months. It's so long so. since we've chatted vaping. <laughs> <laughs> it has. I, I think we're talking about 12 months because you know, back in February, that's they're mentioning okay. around February time frame of next year. Some people are saying maybe by the end of this year, maybe. Originally, they were saying the end of summer. I don't think that's going to happen. Dr. John, the CDC revised its guidelines on how the coronavirus spreads. What are they saying now that's different? So what they said is essentially it was word changing more than actually making any new discoveries or new announcements. And what they said is what we've known all along, this is truly a respiratory virus. So the main way it spreads is from people coughing or sneezing, or if you're close enough from them talking and you're getting those respiratory droplets into your nose or your mouth. The fact that we were talking a lot about contact surfaces causing issues, they're playing that down saying it's not as big of an issue, but it still is something you need to be concerned with. And a lot of hand washing can help with that. But by far, the biggest thing you're going to get it from the biggest way you're going to get it is through those respiratory droplets, breathing them into your mouth, or your nose. Yeah. That's priority number one, social distancing, face masks, Allison.
So, Dr. John, uh, as someone who has become newly obsessed with hand washing, wiping down surfaces, like this is my favorite activity now, should we be less concerned about wiping down countertops and packages and things like that, or, or should you stick with what you're doing? You know, I think if you wipe them down periodically, that's okay. I don't think we need to be as mm -hmm. concerned or uh, the word I hate to use, but paranoid as we've been in the past with it, because now we're finding out it doesn't really yeah. transmit that way. But at the same time, washing your hands is extra important. So if you remember you know, a few weeks ago, people were opening a package, somebody else was taking it out and then they were getting rid of the package. You probably don't have to do that at this stage, but again, washing your hands is important and making sure that you do get those packages out of the house at some point so they're not just sitting around, Allison. Dr. John, Memorial Day weekend is here. Beaches are opening. Your best advice for families who want to spend some time outside in the sun this weekend, what should they be doing? Besides wearing sunblock, of course. <laughs> You know, outside, thank you for mentioning it, but outside is fantastic. That's a you know, great place to be. Exercise is wonderful. People need that. But at the same time, remember, even if your state has opened up, even if your area has opened up and said you can go to these beaches, social distancing is going to be paramount, especially if it's outside your what we call quarantine, your little group of people you trust. You want to make yep. sure that, number one, you're in small groups. You wear masks if appropriate. You're more likely to get coronavirus from people at the beach than you are from the water at the beach. So don't worry so much about that. But don't share towels. Don't share sunscreen. Screen. Don't share water bottles. This is the time to just kind of keep things close at hand to yourself and your little family and uh, still enjoy the outdoors as best you can, Allison. But the main thing, it's going to be a great weekend. Hopefully people are able to get out there, but able to get out there safely. Great advice, Dr. John. Thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to the day when we'll be chatting about vaping on air again <laughs> and maybe a little less coronavirus. <laughs> Have a good weekend. It'll happen, Allison. <laughs> Bye. You too. I believe it. Today, Indiana started phase three of its reopening plan. The governor gave the green light for retails, restaurants, and gyms to open with some restrictions. NBC News correspondent Cal Perry joining us now from Plymouth, Indiana. It's another stop on his road to recovery RV trip across America. Cal, you're outside the famous Plymouth Speedway, uh, which is reopening, but without spectators this weekend. Tell us about that. It sounds like a good time. Yeah, yeah, it should be a real good time, especially for the people who work here who are desperate to get back to work. You can see they're putting water all on the track now. Now, there won't be any fans in the stands, as you mentioned. That's one of the restrictions here in the phase three reopening by the state of Indiana. So they'll be racing without fans. But again, getting people back to work here is so, so key because when you talk about the knock on effect that it has on other businesses, that's when you talk about the effect that it has on the community. Now, we spoke to the owner of this racetrack earlier and we asked him how difficult it's been. Take a listen to what he says. We're hoping to be very close to break even, but I kind of doubt that. But it's very important to, to me as being involved in racing my whole life and and being with who's your tire around on the internet and being helped me out quite a bit when I was in my racing career. And, uh, you know, it's them laying off people and, and, you know, it's time to get racing back. And I think this is going to help with uh, with the whole country. You know, it gives you an idea of that knock on effect. The racetrack affects the tires, affects the cart business. People lose jobs. It's hard to get those jobs restarted. That was Ed Kennedy. He owns a number of businesses around here. And it gives you sort of, again, Allison, a sense of what's going on here uh, in the Midwest. But again, tomorrow night, at least a dozen or so employees will be back to work, which is some very good news here at the racetrack. Yeah, Cal, you said it. Every business that opens safely again can help so many others. Uh, we understand Indiana's governor moved the, this phase of the reopening plan up by two days. Why was that? Yeah, it moved up by two days for all the counties except for three. I think part of it was certainly Memorial Day. You know, the other thing is that the governor is looking at certain markers, new cases, new levels of infections, mm -hmm. um, deaths, and, and sort of by county by county and how that's progressing. And this county has done pretty well knock on wood, obviously. So he felt like it was time to open up in this county and get these folks back to work again. I do think it's probably key and, and fairly obvious, right? Memorial Day. Want to get businesses back up. People are trying to get outside. Yeah. The raceway is also a good way of doing it. They'll be live streaming the race. So you can get some spectator sports back, Allison. Cal, up to 100 people can now gather in one place in Indiana. What are the restrictions and safety requirements for those sorts of gatherings? Yeah, so 75% capacity on restaurants, bars, a lot of those commercial places like that, it was up from 50%. They're staggering it by a quarter uh, each time. So that's really the main restriction. And again, overhanging all this, 
is social distancing. You take those stands, for example, in a couple of weeks when they do open the stands up, they're going to be closing down a lot of seats. The family units will sit together. They'll be six feet. Another family unit. If you come alone, same thing. It'll be six feet between people. And that's what the governor said here, Governor Holcomb. He said, you know, we can get these places open. We can unlock a lot of the economy. But those social distancing measures have to stay in place. And so, too, your favorite uh, pastime now, the hand washing has to be in place. That is something that needs to continue, the governor saying, yeah. in order to get the economy unlocked, or at least parts of it. Yeah, we have all become hand washing pros. Cal, uh, you know we are super into this road yeah. trip that you're taking. I love hearing about what's going on on the RV. Uh, but we heard you had a bit of a rocky start. What happened? Yeah, you know, it wasn't rock so much as it was mud. I, I'm actually joined now by uh, Frank Ringo, who is a uh, professional audio technician. He's also a professional firefighter. He is an amateur fire chopper. But hang on, I'm just going to ask you, I'm just going to dig this thing out here since I don't have your help and you are not ready for this. And this is going to be great. I've been waiting yes, to do Cal. this all week. By the way, the brothers Ringo, Frank, oh, loves you for this, and his Cal. brother Mark have been doing this for about a month, right? And I couldn't do it without him. What happened that night? with the, uh... Uh, the RVs are so heavy and we got so much rain, they literally just sank into oh. the ground. Yeah. Sank into the ground. We and, had to uh, we had to call a tow truck. Yep, called a tow truck, pushed them out, but uh, to no avail. Okay. Needed needed some professional help. So, yeah. Yeah. So t t terrible job there. Anyway, Allison, <laughs> I have to tell you, you know, one of the things that's happening out here is we are so reliant on the kindness of strangers. Ed Kennedy, who you heard in that sound, is putting me up tonight at an RV park that he owns. He's got four spots. I got a place to plug in, and it's a great way to tell the story. But also, you get the best and you get the worst of people in these in these disasters, right? And we're seeing some of the best of people, the kindness of strangers, be it a tow truck driver, be it somebody who owns a campsite that'll let us sleep in it, and that's what's sort of going on out here. Yeah, it is so amazing. Even in tough times, Cal, across the country, you see there are plenty of Americans uh, willing to, to help each other out, uh, give each other a hand. I've been watching your Instagram, though. I'm pretty impressed with how you guys have been doing. The fires look good. You look like you're in good spirits. So, you know, a little mishap here and there. It happens. We appreciate it. We appreciate the followers. You can get these guys on Instagram, too, where they're doing the cooking and a lot of the cleaning and a lot of the cleanup. It's a Love lot of it. fun, actually, to be out here. It's exhausting, but it's a lot of fun, Allison. A lot of fun. I love it. Well, guys, get some rest, stay safe, and we'll look forward to talking to you next week. Thank you so much. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.